keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Now let's get it on. There is no free ride to heaven. Some of us are going to die. But those of us who love our lives more than we love God's will and the establishment of God's kingdom, you've already lost your life. But those who are willing to lose their life for God's sake will find eternal life. Now I'm going to say some things in the closing moments of my lecture that I want you to keep in your remembrance because President Bush, if he goes the way he plans, he will end America as the power that America was and is. Listen carefully. Any Arab or Muslim government that lines up with President Bush will be chastised by Allah and it will be the end of their power and their authority to rule. I'm warning all of the Muslim world, you're either going to be Muslims or Allah will kill every last one of you and bring a new people in your place. If you side with evil, you go down with evil. The American people have to be warned. President Bush is a blind leader. And if the blind lead the blind, all are going into the ditch. I close this lecture with my experience 17 years ago. Where from a tiny village in Mexico, in a vision-like experience, I was taken to the top of a mountain in a little village called Tepoztlan. And there one of the little UFOs came by the side of that mountain. I was accompanied by people and I was somewhat afraid and I tried to get them to come with me. And from the wheel a voice spoke, not them, just you. I was told to relax, and on a beam of light, I was taken up into this wheel. This wheel is spoken of in the book of Ezekiel. Go read it. The son of man that was set down in a valley that was full of bones. The son of man that was told prophesy unto the bones a son of man that was told to warn the preachers woe to the shepherds a son of man and I am that son of man
the Son of Man was told, eat the scroll. I come before you, I need no notes. The notes are already in my belly. The word is sweet in my mouth, but it caused me suffering and pain. But the word must be told. The scripture says, I send you to a hard-hearted, stiff-necked and rebellious people. Their head is hard, but I have made yours like a flint. <laughs> I am a stone, all right, but a stone of stumbling. If you fall on me, you'll be broken into pieces. But if I fall on you, you will be ground into powder by the power of the God that has backed me and sent me to mission you and raise you up. When I was taken to that great wheel that is a half a mile by a half a mile, the Bible tells you that everywhere the Son of Man went, the wheel went with him. And I can tell you the wheel has followed me everywhere I go. I am empowered. I am backed by a power bigger than the power of George W. Bush. You can take it or let it alone. This is the end of this world. When I was on that wheel, I heard the voice of Elijah Muhammad, my teacher, whose voice I heard for 20 long years. He spoke to me. I, he didn't allow me to see his face, but he told me that Reagan had met, he said the president has met with his joint chiefs of staff to plan a war. I want you to hold a press conference and make known his plans and tell them that you got it from me, Elijah Muhammad on the wheel. That man is not dead. He is alive. the Jesus that you've been looking for that escaped death and is now at the right hand of God with power in his hand to destroy this world. You can take it or leave it. But I'm not holding a damn thing back because after I say what I say to you today and when you see me do what I'm about to do, then you see God do what I tell you God is going to do.
Listen, I'm not trying to excite you, but for a long time, I have held my peace. I have never spoken to you about who I think I am or who I know I am. It ain't about thinking no more. I want you to know that I'm born to defeat this enemy with the help and the power of Almighty God alone. We'll get him back for all the hell that he has poured on the black man and woman of the world. Now listen. This man has to go to war within the next year in order to fulfill what he has openly said, that it is the policy of his administration to remove Saddam Hussein from power. As it was in the beginning of my experience, it was Reagan meeting with the Joint Chiefs of Staff to plan a war against Libya a small Muslim leader, a small Muslim nation that was a thorn in Reagan's side. He tried to kill Muammar Gaddafi, but he missed. But I was to learn that as the war was against a Muslim nation over there, it also was against a little brother in America that was over a small nation of Muslims, but a thorn in the side of the government of the United States of America. It's now come full circle. Little Bush is going to try to fulfill what Big Bush didn't do. And he intends to use the lives of the black and the brown and the poor white to fulfill a vendetta that has nothing to do with democracy or a threat to the United States of America, her power and her well-being. But since he has promised now to find Osama bin Laden and Mullah Muhammad Omar and bring them to justice and he hasn't found them yet. And he has promised that he will destroy or unseat Saddam Hussein. Then he must fulfill this during his first term of office or he does not feel he'll get a second term. So within the next year, he has to move. I hope if I frightened you all, it's all right. Listen, 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 man. Let me tell you, you can become afraid if you want to, but every word you hear me say, you are gonna face it. So you can run, but I'll be damned if any of you will be able to hide from the wrath of God that is coming down on America. Give me 10 more minutes. It was Gaddafi in the beginning, it is Bush now in the end. It's been 17 years since that experience and he intends, with, with Reagan it was a secret. They met and discussed getting rid of Muammar Gaddafi 
It was the most expensive assassination attempt in the history of the world. And he failed. He will fail again. Now, he will go to war even if he has to go alone. I warned him that the coalition was not going to stay together. Let me tell you something. This is my home. This is the country of my birth. I don't hate this country. I just hate the way the world has treated the people, particularly black people. I wish that I could make President Bush see the error of his thinking. But unfortunately, just like Moses spoke to Pharaoh, but God hardened Pharaoh's heart because he raised him up and made Egypt great that he could destroy Pharaoh and Egypt that the world may know him as God. I represent that God that is about to wipe America from the face of the earth. America is more wicked than the wicked in the days of Noah. She is more in error in homosexuality and lesbianism than Sodom and Gomorrah. She is more wicked as a slave master than Pharaoh was to the children of Israel as she is to you and me and the weak and the poor of this nation. She has the potential to be the basis for the kingdom of God. There are good people in America. There are people in America that if they knew the truth, they would act responsibly. There are people in America that want to see the filth and decadence of this country turned around. 